thank you for tuning in. Now it ends the future. <laughs> yeah, today we are going to be looking at someone's obituary from hell. Dare I say it? Oh, wow. Someone sent this to me earlier today. And I want to thank that person. You know who you are. Oh, my gosh. Talk about cathartic, catharsis, and healing. Let's get right into it. I tell you, I sure as heck wouldn't want an obituary like that written about me when I'm dead. I mean, I'm dead. I won't know, will I? Perhaps I will. Perhaps it may affect me even. Not sure, but uh, this one definitely has. Let's get right into it. Linda Lernell Harvey Cullum Smith Stull. You think she had a couple of marriages and a half? Hmm. I already can tell something's not right with just that right there. Let's go. Linda Lernell Smith Stull was born October 1st, 1951. Welcomed by the world by loving parents who preceded her in death. In February of 1969, she gave birth to her first child, Gail Harvey Heckman. Lernell deceived her first husband, Roderick Allen Harvey, into believing that he was her first child's biological father. Yeesh. They married and divorced when Gail was three years old. Lernell then had Gail adopted by her second husband, Frank Randall Cullum. They divorced after a decade of marriage. Gail never heard from Frank again, and Lernell's third husband, James Floyd Hart, sexually abused Gail when she was 13. Instead of protecting her daughter, Lernell accused Gail of, quote, trying to steal her husband, unquote, and proceeded to beat her senselessly. After another divorce, Lernell acquired her fourth husband through the unofficial or illegible word-of-mouth, inmate-run, Jackson State Prison pen pal, quote, program. In between and during her marriages, there were a variety of unsavory men in and out of our home. As a mother, Lernell was violent, hateful, and cruel. She physically, mentally, emotionally, verbally, and financially abused Gail. Lernell allowed for her many inappropriate suitors to sexually abuse Gail. Lernell's abuse continued into Gail's adulthood, attempting to physically, verbally, emotionally, and mentally abuse her in front of her children. Gail had to establish a no-contact order to protect herself and her family. That was 24 years ago. In March of 2023, Gail unexpectedly found out who her biological father was through a popular online DNA service. After years of deception from Lernell regarding who Gail's father was, Gail and her family are navigating the waters of getting to know their paternal biological family. This is it. Lernell will never be the mother and grandmother that she could have chosen to be to her family. That door is closed forever with her death. That is what Gail and her family grieve, who their mother and grandmother could have been. While they are afraid that Gail, her husband, and her four children cannot share in their grief, their heartache does lie with Lernell's brothers and sisters, their aunts and uncles, and cousins as they grieve the death of a complicated family member whom they love very much. Lernell passed away December 12, 2023, in Three Rivers, Michigan, and will now face judgment. Gail and her family forgive Lernell and hope that she has found peace. They also hope to find peace within themselves. Lernell will not be missed by Gail or her family. They all understand that the world is a much better place without her. Wow. Wow, wow. And as you see, this is in a newspaper. This was printed in the newspaper. Wow. Wow, just wow. I don't know if you can read all this. That's why I had to read it aloud. Wow. Where do I start? 
this is definitely an incubator. This is someone's incubator. And even though I don't know Gail and I don't know this Linda person, I hate this Linda person, seriously. I think these types of people, well, you know, those of you I've talked to in private where we've had discussions, you already know what I think, right? You know, <laughs> I, I don't want to go into detail because I'll probably have this video <laughs> taken down by YouTube, you know? But um, needless to say, these people don't really, I don't really think they deserve to, to breathe the same air that we're in. This is, this is terrible. And you know what? I believe Gail, I believe Gail, this isn't just somebody making up lies. Why would somebody spend all this money? This, this is a very long, very long obituary. And this is very expensive. This was very costly to someone. You know what I mean? And the tendency for people, especially when you're talking about your own mother, right? When someone dies, it, the tendency is, is to just gloss over all of the bad stuff and just turn them into a saint, right? She was the best person and she was this and this and that. And he was a saint, you know, but um, that's not the case here. And this is unfortunately not very uncommon folks there are incubators just like this i venture to say this woman she not only ignored the abuse that was happening to her daughter but she probably fed off of it perhaps she even instigated it there are women that actually set that up and the reason i say this is because down here it says here her fourth husband she went to the prison system she went to, to the prison system to get her fourth husband. You know, I mean, these women are attracted to predators. I've spoken about this before, but these incubators, they are predators themselves. They are predators. They are, they, they are attracted to child abusers. They marry these child abusers and they get with these child abusers because they themselves are attracted to that they get a rise they get a turn on from from being able to set up the, the the worst kind of abuse of their own flesh and blood children it is a very deep and dark sick thing and nine times out of ten these types of women don't ever go to jail they live their lives out like this one did until they die and no one no one really knows a lot of times when when the victims like this daughter you know she has had to cut this woman off you know and you know these people go on a smear campaign and they want to paint themselves as a victim i'm talking about these incubators right they want to go paint themselves oh i was the best i bet she went around telling people i was the best mother ever and how could my daughter do this to me? And woe is me. This is really evil. This woman is evil. Just straight up. I mean, first of all, she lied to her second husband. She deserved, she deceived her first husband. It says here, uh, Lernal deceived her first husband, Roderick Allen Harvey, into believing that he was her first child's biological father. That's already messed up. That's already messed up. That is, so she didn't even know who, who her baby daddy was. That does not, you know, so many things in this article, I know have to ring home for a couple of several people, you know what I mean? Because we talked about this one here. We talked about this one here. We talked about this one here. And you know what her 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 supporters because I I um I I went down this rabbit hole and her supporters on Facebook are saying that she's saved by the Lord and she turned to Jesus at the end of her life. So we're going to whitewash everything she did and we just need to forget everything she did because she turned to Jesus. Jesus my ass. Excuse my French. Okay. And you know, the church, 
the church has a huge history of trafficking, child trafficking and human trafficking and in covering up the worst kinds of abuse of children. So it's no wonder they ran to her with open arms and had her come on in. Come on in, because we love your kind. Don't they have prison, whole prison ministries where they seek out these kinds of predators? I wonder if she was going in the going with the church to do prison Bible studies to get her husband. You know what I mean? It's just they love birds of the same feather flock together. That's That saying is not for nothing, folks. And that goes double for organizations that seek these kinds of people out and support them and protect them. Yeah, well, she did all that. That was all before she joined our church. And, you know, she gave us a little money, too. Don't forget, the money can cover a multitude of sins now, okay? I mean, you can be an axe murderer, but you got enough money and the law hasn't put you behind bars for one reason or another. The church will accept you with open arms. You'll be sanctified and glorified. You got enough money for the church. <laughs> yes. And then down here, March of 2023, Gail unexpectedly found out who her biological father was through a popular online DNA service. Boy, does that. Woo. I tell you what, I sometimes wonder who's the scriptwriter of the universe. Because we are not alone, folks. Those of us who know what I'm talking about, we are not alone. Mm. Well, well, well. And this woman died, Lernal died December 12th this month. Just, uh, what, a good 11 days ago? Wait, yeah, 11 days ago. So I guess maybe that bothered her too, that her daughter found out who her, her real dad is. And wonder what the real dad had to tell her about good old Lernal. You know what I mean? Yeah. What do you think about this one? I'll tell you. This is a smoker right here. And I already saw some people on, on uh, Facebook. I mean, not Facebook. I saw some people on Facebook, you know, her church friends taken up for her. But that doesn't have any credibility for me. I don't. I don't trust any kind of church people. I already know the deal with the church people. And it's not just church people, any kind of group or cult, you know. Mm -mm. Anybody that takes up for people like this, that already tells me a lot about them. And I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I know there's people out there that align themselves this with this sort of type of person. But I, <laughs> I will not trust anyone that has done this to their own flesh and blood. Are you kidding me? Because people that turn on their own kids like that, there's nothing they won't do to you. And you know people had to talk about this woman, this Linda Lernal Harvey Smith Cullen uh, hooker. Yeah, I'm calling her a hooker. And I hate to talk about people's mamas, but this is nobody's mama. This is not a mother. This might be a motherfucker, but this is nobody's mama. This is a monster. This is a mother is somebody that protects and nurtures her child. She'll lay down her life to protect her, her, her children, right? This is not that kind. This is not that kind. That's what I'm telling you, folks. You know, women aren't born with this. This isn't a, a mother instinct. The mother, th mother thing is not an instinct. There are individuals that are born on this earth that do not have that towards their own flesh and blood. Matter of fact, if anything, they have a, 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 a hidden, a seething, <coughs> a hidden resentment and jealousy over their own flesh and blood, especially their, uh, the daughters, you know. So um, this is just terrible where she says she accused Gail of trying to steal her husband when she found out her, her baby girl was getting violated in the worst way, 13 years old. That is just sick and disgusting. That alone right there, sick and disgusting. And she continued to, I'm sure this lady probably, you know, she may not have outright pimped her daughter out, but all these men that she brought in and let do whatever to her daughter, you know what she was doing. Come on now, folks. Come on now, folks, you know exactly what this woman was doing. And, you know, I don't know if there were any other children she had, but this is terrible, people. This is disgusting. 
And um, she's not she's not an exception here. Like this is way too common, folks. You just don't see these kind of obituaries very much. But um, I'll tell you, a lot of people that we saw on Twitter commented on this, and they felt healed. This is a healing obituary. I'm so glad this lady wrote this obituary because I felt the catharsis. I felt the healing through reading this. I'm like, I am so glad she did this because this was long in coming. She cut her off. That was over 24 years ago. She had to go on a no-contact order. Gail had to establish a no-contact order to protect herself and her family. I'm so proud of you, Gail. If you ever watch this video, I am so proud that you have done that because you have not only protected yourself, but also your children. Too many people out here have these kinds of incubators and they bring their kids and grandkids around these sick people and let the, let this person continue to abuse another generation of family members of innocent kids. And I just don't understand. It is so insane. It is so insane. Protect yourselves, people. Just for the sake of family, don't let people ruin you and in, in, in your children's lives and your grandchildren's lives with these sick people in your family. Get away from them. I'm so glad Gail did that. She established a no contact order. That was 24 years ago. And you know this one here, this Lernal bitch, you know she had to go through the pandemic without, without this daughter without Gail, right? And you know, people in her town must have been talking, wow, a whole pandemic came and went. And this Gail didn't see, it wasn't even checking for this lady. You know, that tells people a lot. I'm telling you, if I, I've seen, I've, I've, I know of a couple of people who have adult sons and daughters that refuse to have anything to do with them. And I watched them go through that pandemic without any of them in the picture and I don't I don't mix it up with them. I know them through professional acquaintance, okay? And they've invited me to dinners and, and parties and things like that. Nope. Mm -mm. I, I'm only gonna deal with you at arm's length on a professional level as far as I have to, but uh-uh. You know, anything beyond that? Nope, you're not getting nothing from me. I, I don't want to fool with you. Nope, nope, nope. Because you did something, whatever you did, it was bad enough for your own sons and daughters to cut you off. No contact. And a whole pandemic passed? No, ma'am, no, sir. I ain't fooling with you. Nope, we're not mixing it up. Nope, high and by is all you get in a professional setting. And even then, I'm going to keep it super short and get away from you and get you from around me. Seriously, you can't trust these kinds of people. Are you Are you kidding me? I mean, look, she already duped her first husband into marrying her, thinking that she was pregnant with his child. You know what that was. She told him she was pregnant. She was, she was opening those legs for a couple of men, at least, if not three or four, and didn't know who the baby daddy was. That's the truth. Bet you she didn't even have any pictures for Gail, you know, for her, her real dad. After she, you know, Gail found out that that wasn't even, and who knows when Gail found out who was supposed to be her dad and who wasn't, right? That's some crazy making stuff right there alone. But the worst, worst is, you know, like even when Gail was abandoned by Frank, the one, the one man that didn't abuse her that, that she, I guess she saw as her dad. I mean, from age three to 13, you know, Frank Randall Cullum was her dad. And then after they divorced, she never heard from Frank again. I mean, can you imagine the abandonment issues this, this girl has, this lady? That is just heartbreaking. I mean, just each of these pieces are just infuriating. They're heartbreaking. And why? Because this is the culprit. This. Folks, the worst predators out there aren't just the men. It's the women hiding behind these predators, their wives, their girlfriends. Yes, even sometimes their mothers. You've got old mothers that help enable this terrible stuff of, of child abuse. But yeah, um, looking at this picture, you wouldn't think. I mean, I'm sure this is a very old picture where this person was a lot younger. But, you know, um, 
you just can't tell by pictures. You can't even tell. You think you know a person. You don't know that person the way maybe their family members know them. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, like I said, this lady passed away December 12th, 2023. And this is really, this is really sick, folks. This is really, wow. I'm just like blown away, blown away. But um, I tell you, I'm so glad Gail wrote this. I want to reiterate a couple of pieces here. This is it. Lerno will never be the mother and grandmother that she could have chosen to be to her family. <laughs> that door is closed forever with her death. That is what Gail and her family grieve, who their mother and grandmother could have been. So they're not grieving her. They're grieving what she could have been. And I'm so glad they put this in here. I'm glad Gail included this piece to make it clear what this obituary was about and to make it clear what in actuality they are really grieving. When a person dies, people don't always grieve the person, okay? This is something I wanna, I wanna put out there and emphasize. When a person passes away, don't automatically assume that everyone is grieving that person's passing, right? Not everyone is grieving the person. Sometimes with people like this, what the family is actually grieving is what this person could have chosen to be but didn't, okay? And now the door is forever closed. Now we know for sure that she's never, ever, I mean, you know, I'm sure Gail was not sitting around waiting for this woman to change her ways, right? I mean, she went no contact. She basically already made that decision to move on 24 years ago. But, you know, death is just like a, 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 fin a finality that you just can't come back from, right? Like, even though Gail was probably already moved on 100% and, and wasn't looking back, Technically, you can still say, well, as long as a person's alive, there is a, is, is a possibility, right? The possibility still exists, even though the likelihood of that actually happening is zero, right? People, you know, people don't change. when they These kinds of narc incubators, these narcissistic, and th I think this one is a malignant narc, okay? Because she was still doing this to Gail when Gail was an adult. And, and doing and abusing her in front of Gail's own children. Like, that's a huge, no, 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 no. But um, with death, it's a finality. And so that's what Gail is grieving, is what this person could have been. Again, down here, it says, Lerno will not be missed by Gail or her family. They all understand that the world is a much better place without her. Yeah. Wow. And I totally agree. The world is a much better place without this person and people like her. Yeah, man. Have you heard of this one? This one's viral. This thing has gone completely viral. It is all over the place. Someone sent it to me this morning, said, you got to look at this one with a fire emoji. And um, I'm here to tell you, it is a doozy. Holy smokes, people. Holy smokes. Bonky says, I know people leave, live secret lives all the time, but it's hard to imagine her family not realizing she was awful after being married that many times, including to someone she met through the prison pen pal system. Yeah, you know the family knew. You know Gail had to cut off not just her, but these enabling family members that probably were, you know, flying monkeys and back and forth. She had to cut off probably the whole family because of just this one toxic one and all these enablers, right? E equals MC squared says... Incubators like this are attracted to predators and prisons are a breeding ground for the kind of predators this woman was attracted to because she herself was a predator. Exactly. 
Dr. Spookily the Sleepy says, I would like to copy this for my incubator's obituary. <laughs> I'm sure this is going through a lot of printers and a lot of therapy sessions, you know? I, I know that uh, I had some healing from reading it, and I know a zillion other people on this thread had some healing from it too, or so they said. 